Uh, hi and welcome to this seventh lecture in this lecture series on computer forensics by me, Joachim Chevrestad from the University of Skövde in Sweden. Uh, and uh, in this lecture it's become time to discuss the last step in the forensic process which is reporting. Uh, because uh, as we discussed uh, previously there is usually a reason for why you do a forensic examination someone ordered it from you and they want something back which is your report uh, and uh, there are some guidelines and that you should follow when you write reports there are some content that should be included in a report and that's what we will discuss now what you need to know however about reporting is that uh, it what's what should be included in a report and the format of it is a bit um, different depending on where you are and in what way you work. For instance, if you work uh, within legis legislation, there is laws that are regulate what you what you want to include uh, as well as local regulations. And if you work for a company, there is uh, surely some kind of company template that decides what should be included in the report and, and such. Uh, however, the most important thing uh, when we get right to it is that your report should reflect a fair and objective review of your examination. Uh, the, the idea with a report is that you should be able to read the report, uh, see all your conclusions, but per perhaps more importantly how you reach them. And, and when we talk about fair, that is, a, that is precisely the concept of being able to understand how you reached certain conclusions. You may say after uh, investigating a computer that a certain person seems to have been the, the main user of it. And, and that's all well and good. But how did you reach that conclusion? What did you search for? What programs did you... Uh, did you look for and so on and so forth so for, uh, that is a fair view also in the concept of a fair report is that uh, sometimes you do uh, a, re a report or a forensic examination as a group and when you do that it's very important that the report reflects who did what and this becomes especially important when you reach the state where you have to bear witness in court because if I am the one that's signing a report together with a bunch of people I might be called to testify on that report uh, however, to be able to do that in a good good way, it must be evident what I did uh, during this forensic process. Because maybe I signed the report uh, as one of the persons that were just imaging a hard drive. And if I just imaged a hard drive, it's very uh, difficult for me to say that the computer was used to commit online fraud. Uh, so that's very important. And that's what a fair view means, uh, presenting the conclusions, how you reached a conclusion and what you did. Um, another thing that is included in, in this with a fair view is that you separate what is facts and what is, uh, what is conclusions. And we will talk a little bit about this on, on the next slide. But in short, you, you can say that a, a fact is something that's, that's objectively certain. For instance, if you're examining a computer that has Skype installed on it, then that's a fact. Skype's installed. Uh, however, if you say that you're examining a computer that has uh, that has a Tor browser, a Bitcoin wallet, and uh, well, maybe some other things. And you say that this computer was uh, likely involved in in selling drugs. Then that's a conclusion, uh, and you should know the difference. And you should be precise with what is facts and what is conclusions in your report. Uh, the second thing uh, is objective, and objectiveness means that you you present it in a, in a reasonable or, or in a fair way, that you have not that your intent is to uh, uncover the truth rather than to take a certain position. So if I'm doing something in a subjective way, uh, that might be uh, looking at how a computer was involved in a crime, and my my state of mind when I go into the examination is that the computer was involved in a crime and my idea is to prove it that, and that's a subjective examination uh, however if I go into the examination thinking hmm now let's see what this computer's been up to and we'll see what what we find then that's an objective way of doing the examination um, the final thing to notice is that it's very common that a report will be read by persons that are not computer expert and we should use a language that is appropriate for that which for instance can mean that we uh, include a section in the report where we explain certain words and um, that we 
try to keep the language as non-technical as possible. And this is usually quite tricky because on one hand, we have to present a fair view of examination, describe what we've done, and it, we have to do it in a way that makes it possible for a computer expert to retrace our steps and evaluate our findings. But on the other hand, we have to do this in a way that ensures that someone that is not a technical person can read it. But because when it comes to court, most people that will read it is not technical because we have the judge, we have the jurors, and, and we have, well, maybe journalists and other third party persons. So this is a very, it's very tricky, but it's at the same time very important. Uh, so let's have a look on what the report should include. And now you have to bear in mind that this is my idea from, from the context of Swedish legislation. Uh, if you're in the, private, in the private sector or in some other legislation, it may be a little bit different, but I would with some degree of certainty say that the, uh, at the very least a report should always include case data and case data that is data such as case identifiers, evidence identifiers, um, the person that worked in the examination, basically the, the basic information of, of the report or about the case so that you know what case it belongs to, what evidence that's been examined in the case, who did what and so on and so forth. Uh, next, the purpose of the examination should be included in the report, and this is a description of the objectives that we talked about before. Why are we doing this examination? What are we looking for? And this is especially important within computer forensics because, as we discussed and as you know as, as technical persons, is that the amount of data in a computer nowadays is immense. It's it's not reasonable to hand me a computer containing a one terabyte hard drive and say, look for everything interesting in this device. It's not going to happen because I would, I would spend from now until eternity until I looked over every byte on that computer. Uh, instead, I get a computer and I get a purpose. Look for traces of uh, sh online chat history and then I go look for that. Look for traces of pornographic pictures, then I go look for that. And that's why it's important that we express the purpose of the examination because that also gives the reader an idea of what to expect throughout the rest of the report. And it, it's a very important thing for you as a forensic expert uh, as a way of clearing your own back. Because say that you get a computer and uh, the objective of your examination is to investigate web traffic. So you take, uh, take your favorite tool, like Internet Evidence Finder or whatnot, and you extract all the uh, on the internet activity history and you look through that and then you send your report uh, based on the internet history and then someone says but hey there is uh, there is a bitcoin wallet on the computer why don't you examine that and then you can say well i was never asked to so the purpose of the examination and um, which is basically a description of the objectives that you established previously uh, then we have the findings, of course, and the findings parts is where you where you present the evidence that you found, uh, and the evidence that's the facts. So if you found web history to Facebook, you say I found that this computer visited Facebook 500 times during the last year. I found that the computer was used to log on to an online banking service on the 5th of May. Uh, and I found that the computer was used to log on to this online chat forum and so on and so forth. And this is where it's very important that this is findings. This is hard evidence, things that cannot be disputed. This is what you find, what you can observe. And uh, then in the next step, we have the conclusion and the conclusions is where you based on the findings, based on the facts, draw conclusions. So for instance, if you see that the computer was used to log on to Facebook 500, 500 times during the last year, then a conclusion can be that a computer owner has a Facebook account. If you find that Joachim was, was logged on to Facebook 500 times, Joachim was logging on to online banking services twice every day for, for the past two months, Joachim used the computer for something something else, then a conclusion may be that Joachim seems to be one of the users of this computer. Uh, however, what you need to know about conclusions is that they must be clearly separated from the findings. You should clearly state in some way in your reports that conclusions are conclusions. And this is because conclusions are not necessarily the facts. 
Computers are not the hard evidence. Conclusions are where you take the hard evidence and you apply your knowledge and your experience and you make conclusions from it. Um, and this is the case, for instance, let's say that you're asked to control if a computer is uh, has been remote controlled in some way. Then you fi get findings. You may look for traces of remote control software. You look for firewall rules. You look for malware and so on and so forth. And that's the evidence. That's what you find or didn't find. And then your conclusion may be, well, it doesn't seem likely that a computer was remote controlled. That's your conclusion. Uh, another thing about the conclusions is that it that it is common that you want to express the conclusions with a scale that is common for your jurisdiction. And I have an example of such a scale. And why is it important to use uh, a common scale? Well, well, that is because if I read your report, it should be clear to me the strength of your conclusions. Uh, for instance, I might may have a, let's say that we are, uh, we're doing an examination where we're going to answer whether or not a computer has been used to store child pornography. Uh, and we do the, the analysis and then we want to uh, do a conclusion and the most optimal way that we can do a conclusion is to say yes it's been used to store child pornography or no it has definitely not been able to store child pornography uh, and i want to stop here for a second and discuss if if it's even possible to answer, say no to a computer related question because in my opinion it's it's actually ex at least extremely difficult to say that a computer has never been used to do something uh, and that is because the ever-changing nature of data or all the possible ways that you can change data. For uh, Let's be with this, with this example of child pornography. Uh, if, I am a, if someone is downloading child pornography to his computer and then erases it all and then you're examining it and you don't find it, then you will find that the computer is not currently storing any child pornography However, it does not mean that it hasn't been storing child pornography in the past. And that is also the case when we look at the, the very common question whether or not a computer has been remote controlled. You can do every possible analysis and that will in the best case end up that with, there is no traces of remote controlling. That may in some way imply that it, the computer has not been remote controlled, but it doesn't prove that a computer hasn't been remote controlled. And I hope that you're with me on the difference here. I, and I understand that it does get a little bit fuzzy, but this is why we do have a scale of how we can express ourselves. So begin, beginning with the most strong, uh, the most strong way of expressing that someone ha something happened uh, is expressing a conclusion in the form of the anal analysis shows that. Uh, and for example, the anal analysis shows that the computer was remote controlled. And if there is remote controlling software on the computer, if there are logs that support that it has been used, then it's undisputable that the computer has been remote controlled. And then we can say that the analysis shows that the computer has been remote controlled. Uh, going back a small step, we have an expression that something like the analysis strongly suggests that. And this is still on the positive uh, side of the scale where we suggest that something has happened. So for instance, say that we're uh, searching for uh, child pornography and we find encrypted files or we find files where the the content of the files is encrypted but we can see the file names and the file names uh, makes it appear to us as if the, the contents of the files are child, child pornography. And we can even see uh, in log files from a downloading software that files with such names has been downloaded to the computer. But we cannot see the actual pictures. And since we cannot see the actual pictures, we cannot say that the analysis shows clearly that uh, there's been child pornography on the computer. However, we may think that we assemble enough evidence to strongly suggest that a computer has been used to store child pornography. Uh, Going down another step uh, is that we can have an analysis that indicates something. And if we have an analysis that indicates something, that is pretty much positioning us slightly towards that something has happened. 
Uh, so for instance, say if you're asked to uh, uh, to decide whether or not the computer's been used to log into Facebook. And you cannot actually see any traces of Facebook logins, but you can see traces of visits to Facebook. Then I would say that that's a slight indication that someone used Facebook because why would you use Facebook to why would you go to Facebook if you don't log in? I'm, I mean, sure you can, but why would you? But we cannot really say more than that because we only see the visits, so that's a slight indication, and then the analysis indicates that something happened. And then we have inconclusive, which is the easiest one. We can't say whether or not something happened at all. And then we have the negative expressions. And the negative expressions are basically as the positive expressions that we just went through. But instead of just saying that the analysis shows that, we add a did not. So if we can find, um, if we can find conclusive evidence, let's beginning from the top of the table let's find a good uh, good example here um, let's say that we're asked to see if the computer contains two hard drives right now and we can only see one then it's obvious that the computer does not contain two hard drives right now and um, and that's when we can clearly say that beyond any doubt the analysis shows that something did not happen or something isn't true uh, and you have to be with me here in that shows that is an absolute. If you're looking as to whether a, compu a computer has been remote controlled or not, how it's very hard or even impossible for you to say that it was never remote controlled dot. However, if you go through all of these uh, steps that we talked about before, looking for programs, looking for malware, looking for firewall logs, and so on and so forth, and you find no evidence whatsoever of the computer being remote controlled, then you might say that the analysis strongly suggests that the computer was not remote controlled. And strongly suggests, that is when you've gone through every possible way uh, of the computer being remote controlled or something else, depending on what your question is, and you do not find any evidence that supports that something happened you do not find any sort of evidence that supports that the computer was not remote controlled but there are still those factors of small uncertain uncertainty for example you may have missed something the computer may have been remote controlled in a previous life or whatnot then you can strongly suggest that something didn't happen and then we have the last one which is the analysis indicates that something didn't happen so let's go back to the example where we're with the with a facebook login and we have a computer where we, from where we cannot not see any traffic to Facebook, but on the other hand, we know that uh, we know that the computer user um, always tries to clean his web history. Um, but the thing is that when we that 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 may make us land in an inconclusive decision. But on the same time, we know that if we do a keyword search for Facebook and don't find it anywhere on the computer that should still imply that the computer has in fact not been used to uh, log into Facebook. But we're on a very, very weak side of the evidence list here. So then the analy analysis indicates, leans some, somewhat towards that the computer wasn't used to log into Facebook. Uh, I can see how this uh, discussion on reporting becomes more of a discussion and um, uh, that's leaning a bit towards the philosophical way. But what we need to remember and what's very important is that we A, separate our findings uh, from our conclusions and B, that we're very uh, careful in our conclusions so that we do not conclude more than we, have, uh, than we can claim. Uh, and that's, that's especially important when we want to say that our examination shows or doesn't show something, then we have to be absolutely sure. Uh, with that discussion, thank you for your attention and if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments field.